So let's talk through the ranks and forces of the Playmarines and Mortarian. Looking over every blighted trooper, twisted acolyte, and tough demon engine in the entire army. Let's talk through the strengths and weaknesses of every Death Guard unit. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking Death Guard, and in this video I thought we'd go through a rough overview of every single unit in the army, talk about a few of the positives, negatives, how they're commonly fielded in-game, and give each unit a very rough and arbitrary score out of 10 for in-game strength right now. Overall I feel like the Death Guard are in a pretty good spot as a faction, lots of usable units with the vast majority of their most iconic stuff and characters being pretty strong in-game and definitely a faction that seems to be capable of taking down big tournaments. In this video we'll start with the infantry units, then go on to their demon engines and vehicles, and finish up with Mortarian, Typhus, and going through the rest of their generic characters. Plenty to talk about with 30 datasheets for the faction, so let's jump straight in. First up, on the battle line we have the Plague Marines, 90 points for 5 of them, or 180 for 10. For standard troops on the battle line, they are really quite heavily armed. Their kit comes with a lot of good melee weapons and special weapons, all of which you can equip. They can pack a fair punch with plasma melter or blight launchers at range, plus some heavy play weapons in close combat. As the troops, they've got high objective control. They're kind of slow when they're on the board, but they've got rhinos that can get them there, and it can carry quite a lot of value for how much point the transport is. A special rule helps them be just a little bit more reliable on objectives with a plus one leadership, and perhaps one of the most standout things for them are really good character leader choices, multiple nice Virion options in particular, such as the Biologist Putrefier or the Foul Blight Spawn, though plenty of the rest are very playable. Perhaps for downsides, it's maybe just a little bit surprising that Plague Marines are still in the spot where their toughness is kind of merely okay. I guess it's partly due to them coming in laden with all sorts of war gear for free. It kind of means that Games Workshop can't cost them too cheaply. Damage to or special weapons will be fairly effective at removing them. That leadership special rule is a bit disappointing really. They will be slow on the ball without a transport, and if you wanted to hold a home objective with them, 90 points is maybe a bit of a high price tag, given that you wouldn't be using those damage attacks quite so much. Might mean that things like cultists or poxwalkers might be a bit more tempting there. Still though, they're used in just about every competitive list these days, often a couple of rhinos moving forward with attached Virion characters to help them out. Certainly a big threat and great at scrapping for midfield objectives against enemy peers, I've chosen to rate them a 9 out of 10. Next up we've got the Shambling Hordes that are the Poxwalkers, 50 points per 10 models, and for just 5 points per model they really are quite a tough chaff unit, with toughness 4 and a 5 plus feel no pain, even if they don't normally get a regular save. At just 50 points per unit, they're pretty nice and cheap for minimum investment roles, things like objective camping or secondary objectives, and they get some fun abilities like the chance to reanimate some corpses if they ever kill things in melee, and Typhus is a fairly godly support option that can join them if he's not being used elsewhere. His mortal wound attack can go directly to replenishing them, which is kind of fun. For downsides, they're very slow at just a 4 inch move, meaning that they're not going to be particularly reliable at getting onto midfield objectives and things. Their AP0 attacks hitting on a 5 in melee are unlikely to do anything more than a bit of chip damage with their lethal hits. Low leadership definitely doesn't help them out for objective holding, where they're only leadership 8. If they are taking Battle Shock, they've got a good chance of failing it. And otherwise, Typhus might be a bit more tempted to run with Death Shroud or Solo. And I've got strong competition for cheap unit roles with things like cultists and allied nurglings, which also have their advantages. Between all that, I'd likely go quite light on them. Maybe a couple of chaff screening units, or perhaps a big unit with Typhus if you want to use him that way. Definitely not unusable, but perhaps a slightly rarer sight in competitive lists at the moment. I've chosen to score them a 7 out of 10. If I'd been a bit less generous, I might have given them a 6. Otherwise, for chaff rivals for the Death Guard, there's the cultists. 50 points per 10 or 100 points per 20. Again, like the Poxwalkers, a cheap unit for objective secondaries and screening purposes. Their main draw to the unit is they get the scout keyword, so you can move 6 inches into the midfield straight away. That is kind of nice for the screening role and being a sort of trading unit to make the opponent come and destroy them on objectives. A nice expendable front line of cannon fodder. They are slightly faster at 6 inch move and better leadership versus Poxwalkers and they can contribute just a little bit of damage with their special weapon shooting, but they're still going to be considered generally bad damage dealers. Their main disadvantages are their much lower durability than Poxwalkers, 
And again, they'll be competing with things like Nurglings for the screening and secondary type role in competitive lists. It does seem that more people tend to go for infiltrating Nurgling allies in the midfield if you want to have some nuisance units there, even if they can't hold objectives. Still though, maybe not awful for minimum investment holding down a primary point in your backfield or scouting out to the midfield. I've also chosen to rate them a 7 out of 10. Kind of fine, but you'd want small numbers at most. Next up, we've got the mighty and murderous scythe-wielding Terminators of the Death Shroud. 120 points per 3 or 240 per 6. They're perhaps kind of surprising that Games Workshop reduced the cost on these, given that they were already pretty good before. At 40 points per model, they really are very tough. Toughness 6 with a Terminator profile and get minus 1 to wound if they're attached to by a character unit. Usually it does make sense to do that as well, given that they've got some really good character options to choose from. To get them into melee, maybe deep striking with rapid ingress could be a pretty reasonable option to get them there. If they do catch things in combat, they get to hit at weapon skill 2 plus with 12 strength 8, AP 2 and damage 2 lethal hits attacks per 3 models. And that's a good profile that will make use of contagions, worsening enemy toughness and getting extra AP a lot of the time. They also get a bit of placebook gauntlet fire, which could be okay on overwatch situationally. And perhaps give them they're one of the best damage dealers for the Death Guard. They're good targets for any damage boosting stratagems you might have. For downsides, they are kind of painfully slow when they're on the board at just a 4 inch move. If you're not right in the heart of the enemy army, you might struggle to catch things after their initial drop. And they are kind of disappointing in that they don't fit neatly into a Lamb Raider. You can put a max unit of 6 in there, but you can't do that and put the character inside alongside. Which is a shame as if you have a squad of 6, you'd definitely want a character out of choice. They are only objective control 1 as well, which is a bit low, considering you just get 3 models and 120 points. They might struggle to take primary points if there's anything significant contesting them. I still rate them as absolutely one of the best primary damage dealers for the Death Guard though. Very dangerous melee and very tough. I'd rate them a 9 out of 10. Moving on to their more ranged Terminator counterparts, we've got the Blight Lords. These are 165 points for 5 or 330 per 10. And that does give them the crown of being the single cheapest Terminator squad in the game, I believe. Though perhaps are a little bit pillow-fisted in terms of their damage and attacks. Their defence is admittedly really quite good for the cost, having the same profile as the Death Shroud. Though they do lack the minus one to wound with a character, which maybe makes them a bit more balanced with the Death Shroud in terms of durability per point, I think. They basically trade off the actually great melee profiles for a flurry of damage one and a couple of damage two attacks and trade that out for getting a bit more meaningful shooting with a bunch of Plague Combi Bolters, Reaper Auto Cannons, and Plague Sprayers and things. Their shooting gets them reroll ones to wound against the closest enemy, though still given the weapon profiles, they're going to struggle to do anything more than good damage to light infantry. Overall, between all that, I really don't think they compare very well with Death Shroud at all. They are a fair bit cheaper per model, but not crazily so. I just don't think that that's worth giving up the massive strength 8 damage to melee profile of the Death Shroud. If anything, it was the Blight Lords that needed the points drop rather than the Death Shroud at the last update, I thought. They do maybe have some theoretical value with some characters like the Lord of Virulence buffing their shooting, though I feel like given their current profile versus the Death Shroud, they're probably not going to be the optimal choice for competitive lists. Given how much they're overshadowed, I've chosen to rate them a 5 out of 10. For the Death Guard Beast unit, we have the Death Guard Chaos Spawn. Galapox Infected can make some pretty nice Nurgle theme models if you want them. The spawn are 70 points per 2. They get you 4 wounds with Toughness 5, a 4 plus save and a 5 plus feel no pain, and regenerate wounds once they're damaged. Their mutation attacks can threaten lighter infantry or 2 wound infantry in a pinch, and with an 8 inch move they move a bit quicker than the Cultists or the Poxwalkers. Unfortunately, they are significantly more expensive than Poxwalkers and Cultists at 20 points more, get far lower objective control than them, and if you're actually looking for a damage dealer unit, they'll compare badly with just about anything else on that front, maybe being in a bit of an awkward middle ground between being super cheap and actually dangerous. I feel like perhaps a unit or two really isn't all that bad. They do have some advantages versus Cultists, Poxwalkers, and Nurglings, but I feel like I'd rather have more units of the above compared with these guys. Due to that, I've chosen to rate them a 4 out of 10. I feel like there's better options for the cheap unit role in the Death Guard. Moving on to Demon Engines and other vehicles. First up, we have the Plague Burst Crawler. 180 points for the Death Guard artillery piece. It went up in the recent points update. For that, you get a fairly hard to kill Demon Engine at toughness 10, a 2 plus save, and 12 wounds. 
plus it can potentially hide from enemies and still inflict some damage with that Plague Burst Mortar, depending on whether or not it's got good targets for those Entropy Cannons. The Mortar is at least fairly general purpose damage with lethal hits and damage too. Maybe the main issue with it is that it's low in AP, so against some targets with higher saves you might either need a Lord of Virulence or to get them within that AP debuff contagion range. A bit of indirect fire is definitely helpful to have in an army, allowing you to pick off some high value enemy units trying to hide or whistle down things on objectives, or perhaps just get to use it to finish off the last couple of wounds on an already badly damaged enemy unit that you can't destroy with anything else. Otherwise it hands out a Battleshock test to infantry which can sometimes be useful, not always the most meaningful when it comes in your own turn though. And those secondary weapons can be at least fairly scary, either sort of last cannons at strength 10 with the entropy cannons, or plague spitters for some mass anti-infantry 2 plus. I'd say the entropy cannons are perhaps the more obvious choice, though plague spitters are some pretty serious point defence for the backfield. Overall it does feel like it's paying a bit more of a premium for its indirect fire to be added to the army now, and doesn't seem quite as tempting as it was before. It still seems they're playable in top list though, I've chosen to score them an 8 out of 10, might well want a Lord of Virulence to buff them though if you are taking them along. Next up we've got the Feta Bloat Drone at 90 points. These things are fairly cheap and expendable demon engines that move forward quickly with a 10 inch move. Their defensive profiles Toughness 9, 10 wounds with a 5 plus invulnerable save which I think is fine for that kind of points cost. And I'd say that all the loadouts are at least usable. I'd perhaps go for the Plague Spitters as my first pick. That Flesh Mower is pretty fun for some dedicated melee though. A dual plague spitter one that would certainly enjoy overwatch versus infantry could make it problematic for some enemy squads trying to take midfield objectives. Being quite quick it could make them an okay choice to spread contagions up the board a bit quicker and debuff the enemy there. And their special rule is fall back shoot and charge so it won't be held up. Combine that with fly and it means that you could be jumping one of these right into the enemy ranks if it was tied up in combat before. Overall I feel like at that point's cost they're pretty interesting. I say their damage output and their durability are both merely okay unless they're against absolutely ideal targets. Definitely feels like a unit that's paying a bit of a price tag for its speed. Though I've seen plenty of competitive lists running say one or two of these guys along. Overall I feel like they're pretty fun cheap demon engines. I've chosen to rank them an 8 out of 10. Next up we've got the slightly ferocious little gun turret that is the Mephitic Blight Hauler. 100 points per model and you can take them in squadrons of 3. This one chips in with a multi-melter and a missile launcher, plus a bit of anti-infantry style damage with the bile spurt. It's more on fangs in close combat and a frag missile launcher if it needs it. Like the bloat drone it's fairly fast and quite easy to hide with that low profile. The strength of the weapons is only strength 9 which maybe is a bit limiting, though it does get plus 1 to wound against vehicles which does help them stay relevant. I feel like it's maybe a bit dependent on getting those multi-melters super close to get good. It won't be able to reach out and shoot down enemy tanks hiding in the backfield. And otherwise its durability is less good per point than the bloat drone due to it costing more. And it's also a less expendable unit for that reason as well. It does have a weak spot against monsters which don't trigger the plus one to wound special rule. Which isn't exactly good news if you're fighting chaos demons or tyranids or something. And I feel that overall it doesn't really quite have enough to carry it on the damage front against its competitors. Things like the Plague Burst Crawler or maybe Death Guard Predators. Definitely not awful though, I would have rated it somewhere between a 6 to a 7 out of 10, depending on how generous I wanted to be for it. Next up, 440 points, there's the Death Guard Hellbrute. This guy's got flexible weapons with the option for close combat and ranged attacks, plus some mortal wound impact hits on the charge when it surged into melee. I'd say by far the most interesting reason to take the Hellbrute though is that it can grant a special rule to hand out contagions at long range. Say if you get one hit with an auto cannon on the enemy unit and the counters being within contagion range, that could hit the enemy with the minus one toughness and extra AP debuff against other Death Guard firepower. Beyond that though, it just really isn't bringing that much to the table. The durability really isn't that good with 9 wounds and a 2 plus save, not compared with what else you could get for that cost. Its slow movement is definitely a problem for getting any melee into close combat. It's just not going to be able to reliably move around terrain quickly and make a charge before it takes a bunch of damage. Even if you focus on its ranged firepower it winds up being kind of weak overall. And it has diminishing returns beyond getting one for contagions. Between all that I feel like it's still really quite overcosted. I feel like it could go down a fair bit. 
kind of a shame really as I feel like the ability to throw out contagions to a unit a long way away is definitely a good one but I think it's paying a bit too much of a tax for that. Next we've got the Death Guard Defiler which is quite a pricey demon engine at 190 points. This guy's melee is fairly scary if it can catch some heavy enemy units that it wants to get those big claws into. A big strength 16 and high damage will do some work. Otherwise it's got a good selection of ranged weapons. The battle cannon is perhaps the standout pick for that. And it could make that cannon significantly more scary with the Lord of Virulence giving it a plus 1 to hit and ignoring cover. Overall though I still think it's just about in the region where it's a bit over costed. 190 points means that its damage and durability just aren't really that great for the cost. Its walking over terrain special rule isn't that relevant on plenty of tables and it's got a massive unit profile that's going to be hard to hide. Overall I feel like it's just got a few too many competitors that are a bit more efficient than the Defiler, even if realistically it's not that unusable casually. For more competitive optimised lists I'd rate this one really quite low, down to a 4 out of 10. More casually though I feel like it's kind of easy to use, maybe it would be a bit higher than that. Next up we've got the Death Guard Predator tanks. These are 130 points each for either variants, the Annihilator or the Destructor. It does seem that these guys do crop up in competitive lists from time to time. Perhaps the most commonly played variant is the Predator Destructor with the turret auto cannon and then Spons and Las cannons. Between the two of those you get a fairly efficient all round shooting platform. A lot of shots to threaten elite infantry and the extra AP against heavy infantry sort of special rule that it gets. Plus having some high AP multi damage things to threaten tanks. You could potentially be aiming at something that's getting debuffed with the minus one AP contagion as well. And the special weapons like the Havoc launchers and play combi weapons help out a little bit too. For weaknesses compared with other vehicles lacking an invulnerable save or 2 plus save means that high AP anti-tank weapons are perhaps even more good value against this guy than most. Otherwise it does have strong competition from the other things that you could take for the sort of gun tank style role. Certainly the Mighty Plague Burst Crawler paying a premium for its indirect fire, but also things like allied war dog brigands too. They move fast and have some pretty scary shooting and come with a bit more objective control. Overall though, out of the more generic Space Marine picks for the Death Guard with the vehicle options, this guy does seem to get taken more than most. I've chosen to rate him an 8 out of 10. Next up we've got the Death Guard Land Raider. 240 points for a big armoured tank with an assault ramp to deliver slow Death Guard melee into close combat. Plus it chips in with some good anti-tank shooting with those Soul Shatter Las Cannons and it's pretty tough to take down with all the wounds, the high toughness and the 2 plus save. Unfortunately I feel like perhaps the biggest deal is that the Land Raider doesn't really have any absolutely optimal units that it really wants to deliver into melee. The Death Shroud really should be the pick here but as mentioned earlier you can't fit them all into the same Land Raider with an attached character which is kind of annoying. Play Marines are okay but they're kind of served by cheaper Rhinos absolutely fine and that's the way that most people tend to go. Blight Lords you could have a squad of 5 with an attached character but they are pretty underpowered right now. Overall though I feel like any of those three would be okay with the Land Raider. It's absolutely fine in its own base rules I think. Just a bit of a shame that you can't have an optimal Death Shroud unit in there. Overall I've chosen to rate it a 7 out of 10. In general it's fairly tough and has a fair bit of threat but it would be better if the units worked with it better. Next up and not really having that problem is the Death Guard Rhino. 75 points for a cheap transport vehicle for Plague Marines. This gets them where they need to be really quite quickly. 12 inch movement and then you can drop and shoot after that if you want to. Quite easy to get to midfield objectives with that on the go or could be a bit of a battlefield bunker for them to charge out of. If you're running Plague Marines it seems that Plague Marines and Rhinos are the way to do it competitively. For such a cheap cost it does what it needs to as a transport. Its durability isn't excessive but nice for 75 points. It's got a large 12 unit capacity that can take multiple units of small Plague Marine squads plus attached characters and things. It has a little bit of its own shooting with the Havoc Launcher, Combis and the Firing Deck. That could be quite a nice place for either Blight Launchers or a Foul Blight Spawn to shoot out of. It gradually regrows wounds with its automatic repairs and then once it's done its transport dropping you can make it a nuisance unit after that. Screening, spreading contagions or objective holding or doing secondary objectives and things just generally pretty handy. Overall looks like the trusty Rhino fits in pretty well with Death Guard lists at the moment. I've chosen to rank it a 9 out of 10 here. Moving on we've got the Miasmic Malignifier. 115 points for a fortification unit. 
This play furnace chimney can set up in the mid board if it wants to with the infiltrate keyword and then basically helps out death guard within a small radius around it. Anything that's wholly within gets minus one to hit and it's also got a small shooting attack that can also threaten some enemy infantry within that same range. Otherwise it can also grant cover in the normal way as well, so it might protect the play marines as they're marching up that way. Unfortunately for 115 points, that's just not really all that much value. I guess ideally for maximal impact you might want to put it on a midfield objective, though there's not really much to stop the opponent just from destroying the thing given that it's not really all that tough for the cost for a fortification. And beyond that they could just ignore it, its range of minus 1 to hit is really quite short, and it can't move or hold objectives itself. Between all that I've chosen to score it a 2 out of 10, certainly not useless rules, but for 115 points that's a bit too over costed. Moving on to Death Guard characters next, and we'll start out with the big guy himself. Mortarian is 325 points, the Demon Primarch of the Death Guard, and as you'd expect for a Demon Primarch he's got quite a lot going on. He's very tough with 12 wounds with a 2 plus save, a 4 plus invulnerable, 16 wounds and a 5 plus feel no pain once you've got through that, that is quite a lot of barriers to damage there. For nearby troopers he gives an aura of ignores modifiers which is genuinely quite powerful against certain things that reduce damage like say Katarn or Space Marine Redemptor Dreadnoughts or anything with stealth, could be pretty good for buffing Death Guard shooting near him, pretty good for Plague Burst Crawlers too. On top of that he also gets a choice of secondary aura, maybe giving cover to nearby units, wound rerolls for a bit more damage, or boosted contagion auras. And his own personal damage threat is enough to slay most normal sized units fairly comfortably in a round or two of melee, both between his rotwind psychic power and his close combat. Overall for weaknesses though, he's still kind of low damage output for 325 points worth of death guard investment. A lot of his buffs maybe feel perhaps a little bit enemy dependent, particularly the modifiers one. If you're playing against an enemy army that doesn't have loads of modifiers going off, then he won't be quite as important. And for his own personal damage, he needs to be at least fairly close range. With big investment but not standout damage like him, there's a good chance he might well be screened or held up by some chaff units for a turn or two if the opponent wants to do that. Still though, I think between all the stuff that he brings, he's interesting enough to have in an army, though not auto include really. I've chosen to rank him an 8 out of 10. Next up we have the Terminator characters led by the Lord of the Harbingers Typhus. He's 80 points for a truly standout epic hero character. Just pretty strong all round with good durability for a character given his Terminator profile and he makes his unit minus 1 to hit in melee which helps out too. He hits hard in close combat with 5 attacks at strength 9, AP 2 and damage 3 with the Mastercrafted Man Reaper. Contagion buffs could certainly help with that, meaning that he should be wounding toughness 10 on a 4+. plus. Really though, the single biggest thing that draws people to him is his fairly enormous mortal wound attack. On a 2+, plus, he just gets to hand out d6 mortal wounds to any one unit within 18 inches that he can see. And if he can keep that alive and firing for a few turns, there's a good chance he probably makes his points back with that alone, never mind his actual melee damage. Even better, it's not even a shooting attack as well, meaning that you could fire it while in melee and you could hit things like alone operatives that are greater than 12 inches away. And if you do slay things while he's leading a Poxwalker squad, he could restore a few. Otherwise, for leadership options, he could run with Death Shroud as well and is reasonable enough to run solo. Death Shroud maybe feel like the obvious place given that he can chip in his big hitting damage attack to their already strong melee and fire out his damage attacks while he's leading them. His movement to 5 inches might actually genuinely help them get to combat a little bit faster if he ranges out the front a bit. That extra inch movement could mean that he shortens the charge a little. Finally, it's perhaps surprisingly viable just to run solo as well, given that he is a fairly tough character for 80 points, with a big hitting mortal wound attack that he could do while doing actions and things. It's probably going to be a bit of an issue for enemies if he drops into the backfield, blasting enemies with mortal wounds and needing some high AP or high damage attacks to bring him down. For downsides, he can potentially cause damage on his own unit if he rolls a 1 on his mortal wound attack, though he can also roll high and kind of go nuclear with even more mortal wounds. Like other Terminators, he is also pretty slow when he's on the board, and potentially the enemy might be able to back away from him if needed. Still though, given that he's a strong character and those mortal wounds are really scary, I've chosen to rank him a 10 out of 10. At this points cost, I think he's basically auto-include for Death Guard armies. Otherwise, for Terminator characters, the other choices I think are still good. 
80 points for the Lord of Contagion gets you similar sort of melee damage to Typhus, but he swaps out the Mortal Wound attack for a couple of different buffs. Rerolling hit rolls in melee, which is really quite nice and well suited to the Death Shroud Terminators, and he also hands out a bit of Mortal Wound damage as he personally takes wounds in close combat, meaning that if an enemy melee unit wipes him out individually, they'd probably take a casualty or two. Overall, he's just cheap and effective and can bear enhancements if you wanted him to. I've chosen to rate him an 8 out of 10 here. i say the main issue is that he's probably going to be a secondary pick after Typhus, who would be my first go-to for a similar Terminator character. Next up, there's the Lord of Virulence, also 80 points and has some similar things, but also does a bit of gunnery command. Perhaps the biggest draw to him is his focal debuff on one unit, Blast weapons get a plus one to hit and ignore cover against that target. Really nice for Plague Burst Mortars or perhaps Defilers. If you're running multiple Plague Burst Crawlers, it's at least tempting to have this guy along. Otherwise, you get to reroll wound rolls for the ranged attacks of his unit. Useful enough on either the Blight Lords or the Death Shroud with their Plague Spurts. He personally chips in with damage with a Plague Power Fist, plus a whole bunch of Plague Spewer shots, which are twin links. Between the two, I feel like he's kind of equivalent to the Lord of Contagion just for raw damage output, just a bit more with range compared with melee. Otherwise, he does have the downsides of the Terminator units, moving kind of slowly, and perhaps compared with the Lord of Contagion or the Terminator Chaos Lord, his buffs don't work quite as well with the melee-focused Death Shroud. He doesn't help out their melee at all besides his own attacks. Otherwise, he does need to get line of sights to guide that Plague Burst Mortar Fire, and that might be at odds with them wanting to fire at something that would otherwise be very safe on the board, meaning that his buff might not always actually be relevant for them if they want to target something else. Still though, a strong character, I'd probably consider one if I were running 2 or 3 Plague Bursts, I've chosen to rank him an 8 out of 10 here. Next up, we've got the Death Guard Chaos Lord in Terminator armour. He's 85 points and allows reroll hit rolls of 1, which is pretty good for Death Shroud in melee again. Kind of similar sort of value a lot of the time compared with the Lord of Contagion there, given that they hit on a 2 plus innately. I guess in theory he's a bit more usable with the Blight Lords compared with the Death Shroud, given that he rerolls ones to hit at range as well as melee, so helps out their shooting. Otherwise, his special rule is a chance to hand out D3 mortal wounds to all enemies in Contagion range at the end of the turn, and that could stack up to some random nice chip damage if you got him centrally in the enemy army. That one, I suppose, could combo fairly nicely with the Living Plague Enhancement. Otherwise, you can take a Plague Power Fist similar to the Lord of Virulence and has fairly good toughness like the rest of the Terminator characters. Overall, as a leader, I don't think he's too bad. I feel like he'd be a lot more relevant if there weren't quite so many good Terminator character choices to lead the Death Shroud. As it is, I've chosen to rank him a 7 out of 10. Realistically, I feel like he's probably one of the last picks that you'd take for the Terminators. Though genuinely he really isn't all that far behind, he does buff their damage, and that scattered mortal wound thing could genuinely be quite impactful later game if the contagion range is big and can affect a whole load of units, having enemies start to die around him is quite a big deal. There's also the option to run him on foot as well, perhaps a surprisingly cheap Chaos Lord at 65 points. This is one of the guys if you want your Plague Marines to be a bit more fighty in melee, he can take Power Fists for 5 attacks at Strength 8, AP 2 and Damage 2, and that does make him more dangerous in the fight phase than the rest of the feet of Virion characters. Otherwise, he also gives you reroll ones to hit for his lead unit, which helps play Marines out both at range and in melee. Definitely nothing wrong with that either, and it means he'll be able to reroll his own attacks too. He also gets that kind of fun Mortal Wound buff at the end of the turn to have a chance to hand out D3 Mortal Wounds again. Overall, I feel like this guy's maybe just a slightly underrated pick, he does have competition from some amazingly great Virion characters, such as the Biologus Putrefier and the Foul Blight Spawn, and he is a bit more expensive than those guys, but 65 points for a fairly good melee profile, a good damage buff rule, and some scattered mortal wounds doesn't seem too bad to me. I've chosen to rank him a 7 out of 10. Next up, there's the Malignant Plague Caster, also 65 points for the Death Guard Psyker on foot. He brings a general purpose Plague Wind shooting attack, which is fairly good against Space Marine equivalents. You get around about 6 or 7 shots with AP 2 and damage D3. He gets a little bit of melee with his force weapon, and then he brings two annoying debuffs to the enemy army. A 2 plus chance to make the enemy unit minus 1 to wound in melee, perhaps making their damage output significantly worse. And also Plague Wind slows the enemy for a minus 2 to move, advance and charge potentially meaning that one unit that gets hit by that 
will really not be going anywhere fast, and might even struggle to make it into close combat with the playcaster's unit if he's placed maximally far away. For weaknesses, he maybe does feel like just a little bit of a meta pick, you're dependent on the enemy having good melee units that will really fear those debuffs, if not, then he just becomes a kind of underwhelming damage dealer character. He does have the chance of inflicting mortal wounds on his squad if his powers fail. Some enemy units have specific defences or buffs against Psychic, both for damage and defence, and that movement debuff is quite a lot less useful, seeing as you have to be within 12 inches to hand it out to the enemy unit, but provided you are just under 12 inches from that enemy unit, you could still potentially prevent a charge if they roll a bit low. Overall, I'd say is usable, but probably eclipsed by all the other characters that can join the Play Marines. I've chosen to rank him a 7 out of 10 here. The Death Guard also have their Psyker and Terminator armor as well. 70 points makes him the cheapest Terminator character if you just wanted something to trigger the buff for the minus 1 to wound for Death Shroud. And perhaps his biggest selling point is really quite a big range psychic alpha strike. 2d6 shots at strength 8, AP 2, and damage 3 if you trigger his once per game damage boost. With a good roll on that, you could potentially slay multiple enemy terminators or medium infantry, going a long way to justifying his cost in the first place. That attack does have some pretty good range as well at 24 inches. There's a good chance that after they've teleported in or something, you could hit something meaningful. Otherwise, he just adds an extra terminator body to the unit, this one with 5 wounds rather than 3. He can take a power fist to chip into melee a little, and he debuffs enemies in melee for minus 1 damage on a 2+, plus, which could be really big if your Death Shroud were being hit by, say, damage 2 weapons. That's really going to go down badly, in addition to their minus 1 to wound with the enemy. Otherwise, again, he does have the chance of inflicting some mortal wounds on his own squad if he gets unlucky. Enemy anti-psychic might hurt, and his damage will drop off quite a lot after the first strike when it goes down to damage 1 at his ranged attack. Still though, for a very cheap Terminator character, I think he's very playable. I've chosen to rate him an 8 out of 10. Next up, we've got the Big Bad and Chunky Death Guard Demon Princes. 160 points for a fairly tough monster character. 11 wounds at a 2 plus save and 10 wounds. And in melee, he hits with 6 attacks at strength 8, AP 2 and damage 3. Okay against an elite infantry, though it's a bit unfortunate that it's not that general purpose to tangle with anything toughness 9 or above. His boost is an aura of feel no pain for nearby infantry, they get a 6 plus feel no pain, so nice enough if you can coordinate with some play marines or terminators, though I'd say it's not such a standout durability buff that is, is really worth building around in my opinion. Being not that fast and ground bound doesn't really do him any favours getting to melee, it's likely that your opponent will have a turn or two's worth of shooting to be able to try and deal with him or could potentially charge him first. I feel like overall his numbers just don't really stack up well compared with the other things that you could take for the cost, particularly demon engines, shooting things, or maybe even allied war dogs. I'd much rather have, say, a war dog carnivore with that terrifying melee and fast movement versus this guy. Overall, I've chosen to rate him a 5 out of 10, just not really all that strong for the cost. If anything, though, I do think he's probably stronger than the Death Guard Demon Prince with wings. He's 35 points for the upgrade of an extra 4 inches worth of movement. He moves 11 and gains fly. When he gets to almost 200 points though, he's now looking far more mediocre on the durability front. And this version's only toughness 10, not toughness 11 as well. And his damage output is even worse per point. Really just not very acceptable to have a 200 point unit that can't even threaten enemy tanks very well. He does get devastating wounds on the charge and hands out a battleshock test on the charge. So I'd say that neither of those are meaningful enough to tip the balance. He also loses the aura of 6 plus feel no pain for infantry, which doesn't help. Overall, I'd argue he's way overcosted as a data sheet right now. I've chosen to rate him a 3 out of 10. Finally, we get into the Death Guard support characters with the Feated Virion, and there are a couple of really good units here. Perhaps chief amongst them is the Biologist Putrefire, who is an absolute competitive staple right now. This guy brings the Blight Grenades to the board, a free grenade stratagem for 3 mortal wounds on average at 8 inch range, and he can do that in addition to using a grenade stratagem from somewhere elsewhere, so potentially if he's alongside another unit jumping out of a rhino, you could potentially shower the enemy unit in front of you with an average of 6 mortal wounds for 1 CP plus buying this guy in. On top of that, he also adds in a seriously good damage boost to the unit, all their weapons become lethal hits, and the lethal hits for the unit go off on a 5 plus. Really nice with the mixed collection of special and melee weapons that Plague Marines get. On top of that, he also gets the same buff on his own Hyper Blight Grenades. 
D6 shots at strength 5, AP 1 and damage 2 at fairly close range. All of that play marine goodness is handy to deliver with rhinos. And you do have the option of attaching multiple Virion characters to a play marine unit if you'd like to. All that for 50 points I think is a really good deal. For any weaknesses I guess he doesn't have much melee threat. Games Workshop did tone him down slightly, only allowing him to use his grenade ability once per phase, as opposed to if he had multiple of these on the board, they could all use it before, which was kind of crazy. He does have Deadly Demise, which might cause some mortal wounds on your own troops if you get lucky, though not very many. And with the short range, he does kind of need a transport to get him there, though Rhinos are very happy to provide that service. Overall, seems to be a top-tier character for Death Guard leading Play Marines into battle at the moment. I've chosen to rate him a 9 out of 10, I might have been tempted to give him the full 10. Next up, there's the Noxious Blightbringer with his Plague Bell. He's 50 points as well, and he brings a reroll advance and charge to the table, and a minus 2 to Battleshock test nearby to him. Genuinely a fairly big leadership debuff there. If your opponent is actually taking Battleshock, there's a pretty reasonable chance that he, they fail the test. Overall though, between not really having much damage himself, and mobility being sorted by rhinos for play marines for the most part, he just doesn't really have that much role. I don't feel like the battle shock ability is usually going to be enough really to tip the balance. It's just not particularly reliable to hand out as a mechanic, and Death Guard don't really get all that much benefits from extra battle shock tests happening. Say if you comboed it with plague burst mortars, even with the debuff, there's a reasonable chance that the enemy passes the test anyway. Still, between all that, I've chosen to rate him a five out of ten. Feels underpowered compared with the other options. Next up, there's the Plague Surgeon, the Death Card Apothecary Medic. He's 65 points, and his ability is to resurrect a slain Plague Marine in the command phase. Could be good for getting extra bodies on objectives, avoiding battle shock on occasion, or shortening charges later in the turn. He does have some okay melee of his own. Four attacks at strength 5, AP 2, and damage 2 is perhaps surprisingly good for a support character. He can potentially heal nearby infantry characters for three wounds in the movement phase, including himself. And again, like the rest, can double up with attachment to units. For downsides though, this guy's kind of rarely played in tournaments. He's more expensive than most. And for his core benefit of resurrecting play marines, you're sort of gambling that the unit will be damaged but not destroyed. It certainly can happen, though not always reliably if your opponent focuses them down, which they might do if he's around. Even if he did get a turn or two's worth of restoring units to the board as well, you're only resurrecting a 19 point play marine. It's certainly not terrible, but he's going to need to do that multiple times before he really justifies his investment on that front. And annoyingly, the ability doesn't work in transport, rhinos being one of the main ways to get them to the front. The infantry character healing thing just feels a bit awkward as well. Usually that's just not going to be relevant at all unless there's some sort of crazy precision weapons going on. Characters in 10th edition don't normally take damage until all their bodyguards have been slain. And he himself isn't enormously tough, so perhaps isn't as likely to be injured but not destroyed. Overall, I feel like just both of his abilities are a bit awkward. I feel if he'd given something like a 6+, plus or a 5+, plus feel no pain to his squad, he might have been a bit more tempting. I've chosen to rank him a 4 out of 10. Next up, we have the other big damage dealer, Virion character, in the Foul Blightspawn. He's 50 points for the character with the Plague Sprayer and the Stench Vat. A fairly dangerous anti-infantry weapon with a anti-infantry 2 plus and hitting with a torrent attack at strength 7, AP 2 and damage 2. Really quite dangerous to space marine equivalents. It could be a potentially good one to fire from a rhino with a firing deck as the squad moves up. And it's quite good for overwatch combined with the rest of the squad once they're disembarked. On top of that he also gives the unit fight first as well which is pretty handy for a fairly dangerous melee unit with those heavy play weapons particularly when they're likely to be fighting on midfield objectives certainly makes them a bit harder to approach and between all that for 50 points he just adds danger both at range and melee and he does seem to be really quite popular as a result. He doesn't get any specialist melee damage which is maybe one weakness given that he gives fights first he's certainly like to be fighting first with something scary. But still, overall, the deal is definitely a good one for 50 points. I've chosen to rate him a 9 out of 10. Next up, for 45 points, we have the Tallyman. This scribe of Nurgle counts the slain, and perhaps his primary ability is to farm a command point on 2d6 on a 7+. plus. That gives you a 58% chance of getting one, so you'd usually expect around 3 extra command points per game if you can reliably keep him on the table. On top of that, he also gives the fairly general purpose boost of plus 1 to hit for his unit, you could have heavy plague weapons hitting on a 3, or a lot of the other firepower hitting on a 2. 
is really quite cheap at those 45 points. He chips in a tiny bit of damage with a sustained hits plasma pistol. For downsides, he doesn't really have that much damage output, of course. The command point farming doesn't work while he's embarked in a rhino, which is a bit of a pain. And given that it's a random roll and you are going to fail plenty of the times, he can't be relied on to generate CP every turn. Sometimes he's going to fail and he can't really plan for that. I also feel like while both of his buffs are really quite good ones for 45 points, he might struggle to use both. If you're getting your Playmarine marine unit into combat and using the plus one to hit for their ranged and melee weapons, then they're probably going to be exposed to enemy reprisals, but you wouldn't get to use it if you just hide him safe and farm your CP. Overall though, for 45 points, I think it's kind of interesting that you can generate so many command points with that. Maybe it could be interesting on a unit that acts as a bit of a counter-attack type unit, move up into a safe ruin for the first two or three turns and farm some command points, and then jump out to take the midfield objectives towards the end of the game. If he stays alive any longer, then so much the better. Overall, for 45 points, I think he's a good deal. I've chosen to rate him an 8 out of 10. Finally for the support characters we have the Death Guard Icon Bearer, he's 45 points for a cheap plus one objective control on the unit, that means that if they fail Battleshock they'll still have some OC which is nice, and once per game he pushes out a big bubble of 12 inch contagion range for his unit, which should mean that if the unit ventures up the board then loads of things get the AP debuff and the toughness debuff. That could be quite nice if you plan to do that, say, turn 2, and try and light up the enemy army with maximal firepower at that point. Besides that, though, he contributes very little to damage or defense. The OC and Contagion tricks both feel like ones that might not really be relevant every single game as well, and just seems perhaps a little bit more unreliable to actually have some good value in the game versus a plenty of the other good Virion characters. Between all that, I've chosen to score him a 5 out of 10, maybe not too bad as a sort of tech piece, I guess. Big Contagions and Super OC Plague Marines both do have advantages. In any case, that just about brings us to the end of Index Death Guard units. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Which units have been seeing you to good success on the tables against the enemies in 40k? And which ones has Nurgle found wanting recently? If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Auspets Tactics. I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming, and I do tend to post new ones just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Auspex Tactics does have a Patreon page as well. You can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to see more, but channel patrons do get a few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.